Okay, we finished the first two episodes. Go ahead, guys. Give yourself a round of applause because you are two steps closer to understanding why Hugh Forge is doing the things that it's doing. And so today we are going to hop right into standard mode. Many of you are like, Vic, you're hopping into standard mode on episode three. We should have been there in episode one. And I get it. I know you want to get to creating some awesome projects, but understanding the foundation is going to be the thing that helps you master Hugh Forge in the future. And so today we are going to be looking at standard mode and we are going to understand why Hugh Forge is making the decisions that it's making to our image. So without further ado, let's hop right in. Let's do a quick recap. Remember over here, when we're looking at our TD values, the lower the number, the more opaque the filament is. And the higher the number, the more translucent the filament is. This is important because that number is telling us how much light that filament is going to allow through or how much of the layer before it's going to let through. But today we're gonna look at the image here on the right. Hopefully, we will be able to understand why Hugh Forge is choosing to put the colors on the left where it is. You see, it is choosing to put the orange where it's choosing to put the orange for a reason. That's purposeful. The black is here for a reason. That's purposeful. Same thing with the gray in the upper left. So we're going to understand why Hugh Forge is thinking the way that it is, because this is going to set some of the foundational work for what we do in the future. So if we look at our image over here on the right, we have the Stormtrooper. Now, this is not a grayscale image. This is a full color kind of, I don't know, you know, different. It's got a lot of gradients in there. We got some pink here on the helmet. We have some gray on the armor, some white on the armor. There's a lot kind of going on over here. And um, it's, going to be pretty pretty and a pretty interesting image when we're in standard mode. The thing that we have to understand about standard mode is that Hugh Forge is going to be reading this image simply based off of its brightness data, okay? The fancy word is its luminance. How bright are the brightest parts of the image and how dim are the dimmest parts of the image? Now we can actually see the way Hugh Forge is thinking. If you take your mouse right here, see your mouse, okay? You're gonna take your mouse and you're gonna press the middle sc scroll wheel button in, okay? Take it and press the middle scroll wheel button in. You see that? We're just pushing that down and our image is going to turn into this monochrome kind of black and white image. Now, this image tells us a lot about the way Hugh Forge is thinking because the way we have the filaments layered here in our color core are directly corresponding to the luminance values that Hugh Forge is reading. So to simplify that down, look up here at the white part of the helmet. You see where this is the whitest. If we come over to our picture here, we are going to see that the lightest part of the image is white. That's not because white filament is at the top. It's because it's at the top of our color core. So if I move the orange right here to the top of the color core, we are going to see all of the lightest parts of the image turn orange. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable. Actually, no, we're gonna bring the white down for the sake of the demonstration here and we're going to bring our white up. So we see that the white and the orange basically traded spots. The orange is now where the white was, and the white is now where the orange was. That's because the grayscale image here, its brightness data is telling Hugh Forge that the brightest part of the image is right here, which means that the color at the top of your color core is going to be at the brightest part of your Hue Forge. I need you to pause. I need you to rewind the video if you need help getting that, because that is very, very important. The brightest part of your image in standard mode is going to be the highest value on your color core. That's very important. We're going to put our image back to the way it was. Now the white takes back its rightful spot here at the top, and we see that the white is over here, not because it's white but because it's at the top of the color core, all right? Which means if I were to put gray up here, the gray replaces the brightest parts of the color core, all right? I know I've talked about this for like already five minutes, but this is so important, I need you guys to get it. Now let's work down. So 
here in the middle, we have this kind of value. We'll specifically look at the helmet. A lot of areas are changing here. And if you hover your mouse over different layers, you will see the changes that it will make to the image. So if we hover our mouse here, we see that this, the highlighted areas on our image are going to be the things that change. And that's because if we look here, these are going to be our second brightest or our mid kind of gradient, mid monochrome color. So these would be your light grays that your image is picking up. And so that's why we see orange here on the helmet, because this is that lighter gray. The reason we don't see orange, say, up here in the top left is because this is a much darker gray. And if we use our context clues, that's why this gray is up here in the top left. It's because it's that darker gray or that darker color. And so it's going to be put right up here. Now, let's use a different color to help illustrate this. We'll use green, okay? Green changes to all of the places that are that darker gray color. Now, gray has a much lower TD value, so it's more opaque than the gray was which means we are going to get a lot more green shining through than we did gray because the Bamboo Lab Basic Green is 2.0 TD and the Bamboo Lab Blue Gray, which was right there, was a 3.0 TD. And then we're going to see the same exact thing for the black. These are going to be your absolute darkest part of the image. So it's our eyes, it's our kind of joints here, the neck here, and so our image is going to place the bottom most color in those darker areas. So we can move a hot pink there. And now all of what should be black turns pink. Again, pause the video. Does that make sense? The way that HueForge is going to be picking up your colors in standard mode is from dark to light. Grayscale image, the darker the color is right here, the is going to be the lower portion of your color core. As you get brighter into the brighter sections of your monochrome image right here, it will start moving up your color core to when you reach the very top, the brightest. As you reach the top of the brightest, that is going to be your highest most or your uppermost layer on your Hue Forge. So let's play around with those settings and those concepts and create a Hue Forge using the Stormtrooper. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all my colors, okay? Except for black, we'll keep black there. If you remember, spacebar is the button you push just to deactivate those layers. But since we're not even going to use them, I'm going to go ahead and delete them. Now, I am going to look here for a lighter gray, all right? I want a lighter gray. Actually, let's do maybe even like an indigo, okay? We're going to pull a 1.1 indigo. This is the first time that I'm editing this image, and so you are going to see the way that I process this in real time. Now, remember, I'm not going for color match. If I was going for color match, we would be over here in color match, all right? But we're not touching color match. We're just trying to create an image that looks pretty cool. Now, I am going to also grab magenta because magenta is a really cool color and I like it a lot. And then last but not least, I am going to grab a white. And I know I took a white off. We'll use Bamboo Lab Ivory White up at the top. Actually, no, I wanna use Bamboo Lab Jade White. Yeah, that's just a really good color. And now we get to play around with some of these colors to get a cool kind of effect here with our Stormtrooper. Now, we could, take a look. These stars here, they're going to be pretty white because the values that Hue Forge is reading this, the brightness data is pretty close to the white on the image. So the likelihood that we're going to be able to get a yellow star is not that high, right? Like now that's a cool effect. It kind of adds a, a color, a layer of depth to our image, but this is not going to give us the yellow stars unless we kind of max out our, our yellow there and make that the uppermost or the highest most color. So we're gonna bring our jade white back, but I do think we can get some of the blues or the grays there down in the chest piece. And so I'm gonna type in blue and we're see if we can get a cool blending of colors. Now we might not be able to do that, but we should give it a shot and see. That's a little too blue in my opinion. 
let's try let's try the bamboo lab blue here i think it's got a decently middle of the range td and i am blind i am missing out we're gonna type in bamboo lab and this is why you should have your filaments sorted um i don't don't follow after my footsteps it's right at the top <laughs> okay Now we can see what's happening here. I want to explain what we're seeing in this image because this is actually really, this is a really good teaching moment. We see that we have some blue now here on the neck and on the joints. The reason we have the blue there on the neck and on the joints is because this, the, the luminance value or the brightness data is picking up here on the joints and on the neck as a darker gray, which means that's going to be a little bit lower on our color core, which means the lower we bring this blue, the actual more blue will cover up in this area. But if we bring the blue kind of up here, which would look terrible, we see that these turn purple. And that's because purple is now that second most layer in our Hue Forge. And even now they are pretty purple because it is that darker gray color. Now we could bring in the blue gray. And if we bring it back into our image here, we can see that the purple and the gray are kind of fighting for dominance here in the lower darker gray kind of areas. And that's because they both have very low TD colors and they're both, they're both very dark. And so because they have both pretty low TD values are very opaque, they're going to clash with one another. They're not going to mix very well. If this kind of gray, or if the purple was a beige, we'll get better blending with the purple, but this doesn't, this doesn't look good. So we're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna bring our indigo back in here, and we are going to bring our black up. We want those to be, the blacks to be very vibrant here in this picture because it'll add to the perceived contrast in the image. And we're going to bring that in. I do want to test. I didn't mind the yellow. Honestly, it looks pretty cool. Um, I'm going to, I was about to make an edit to this image to make it look a lot better. But actually, no, this will be a good time to talk about some settings down here on the bottom. Um, I'm going to give you guys a little, a little peek into something that we're going to talk about much later. Blend depth in particular. Blend depth is a setting that will add layers to your Hue Forge. Okay. Essentially, you will have more layers to play with your blending. So you see the mesh height here is marked at 2.24. But if I up my blend depth to 1.92, now you see that I have more layers. I have 29 layers instead of 27. And my height, my mesh height is 2.40. But did you see the blending that we got when we just upped it by two layers? The colors blend much nicer. We actually have a dark purple, kind of like a mid purple here. Right in this area, we see like the purples are starting to blend with one another and the purple magenta are now kind of creating this really cool effect as to like before they were competing for some dominance. It was very, it was very purple, very one toned. But when we add a couple layers, now we're getting some, some more depth to our image and you could even bring the white back here and see that it's really helping this image blend. But I really like the way the yellow looks. And so we might keep that. And just for like playing around sake, we can up this by a lot. And now you see that our image is blending. We have a lot of options now with the way that our image is, is looking. And like, that's, that's a pretty cool image. Now you have to understand when you up your blend depth, you're making your mesh a bit bigger. And so you definitely want to keep that in mind because the thicker your Hue Forge, the longer it's going to take to print, the more filament it's going to use to print. And just, it, it kind of, you kind of deviate from that Hue Forge feel because it is becoming like a thick piece of like drywall or something. And you definitely don't want that. Although I would be more than comfortable for a lot of my photos to bring that blend depth depth up to almost four, depending on how complex the image is, because sometimes you just don't have enough layers to play around with 
all of the blending that you want to play around with. If you have a 0.02 millimeter nozzle that changes and are a 0.2 millimeter nozzle that changes, you can um, play around with your layers a little bit more because you are going to double the number of layers that you can play with, but it will take double or sometimes triple the amount of time to actually print that Hue Forge. So I am going to pause this video here. We're going to briefly recap everything we talked about. The first thing we talked about was why Hue Forge is making the decisions that it's making for our images. So we have the Stormtrooper. When we press our middle scroll wheel right here, just this middle button, we push it down into our mouse. We will see the luminance map or the brightness data. I want you guys to remember that term, brightness data for our image. The brighter the brightness data, the higher on the color core the um, it will read from. The darker the brightness data, the lower on the color core it will read from. This is very important for you to understand. This will be technically the case for every mode that we play around in. Granted, it will change, especially when we get into color match and color aware, okay? Those will be for maybe tutorials much further down the line. For this tutorial specifically, for this series, we will only be focusing on standard mode and we will dive a little bit into color pop. All right, so we understand that this is the way that Hue Forge is reading your luminance data, your luminance um, or your brightness data here in the image. That's why when we have yellow at the top, it is going to replace this bright part of our Stormtrooper with the yellow here. And that's why magenta is going to replace the lighter toned kind of colors here on the helmet, as well as the lighter gray here with the magenta in the original photo. That's why the indigo will cover the darker gray areas. And that is why the black is going to cover the darkest areas of your image. Guys, I hope that made sense. I'm going to go back and rewatch it to make sure I explained everything clearly enough. But remember, this tutorial is for absolute beginners. And if you're still struggling to understand something, please let me know down in the comments. I'm here to help. I want people to have a good understanding of how this program works because I want to see this program thrive. I want to see the creator do really well. And I want to see more Hue Forge work hit the 3D printing space. That's why I'm creating tutorials like this. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please please let me know down in the comments below. I would really appreciate a thumbs up on the like button. We are quickly growing to 5,000 subscribers. I'm really working towards becoming monetized on YouTube so I can do this more um, and it can become more of a self-sustaining thing for me. And so if you wanna help me out on that journey, subscribe, drop a like, watch the whole video. That helps out a ton. And I am so thankful for everyone who has stuck around and gotten something out of these tutorials. Remember, I have a Discord. It's linked down in the description. Please join it. Ask us your questions. We are all learning Hue Forge together. And I also offer one-on-one -on -one Hue Forge coaching in my Patreon. If you are interested in becoming a Patreon or have any more questions about what Patreon membership looks like, you can let me know in the comments below. I have my Patreon structured into three different tiers. The first tier is where you just get access to my exclusive Hue Forge work. So I release about 12 different Hue Forges a month on Patreon. And if you just want to be able to print that work for yourself. I offer that at $5 a month. At $12 a month, you receive a merchant license to be able to sell all of the things that I offer from Maker World and the exclusives on Patreon. And then at $25 a month, you also get the merchant license, but you will also get one-on-one -on -one Hue Forge coaching with me. You unlock dozens of tutorials. You'll receive live calls and live meetings from everyone in the course. I believe we're at 15 people currently in the course. And so if you're interested in joining a, a new Hue Forge community that's growing and thriving and, and really learning Hue Forge together, check that tier out. I would highly appreciate it. It will help me continue to offer high quality tutorials like these. Thank you to all my current patrons that are subscribed. You guys make it happen. I'm incredibly thankful for you guys. I wouldn't be here without y'all and I will catch you guys in the next video. Until then, y'all take care.